everybody. My name is Lori Key. I am the realty goddess of Los Angeles, California, and I help to establish the community one house at a time. Welcome to this episode of Securing Your Legacy. We have really been talking about some wonderful things, and hopefully this will help you with securing and planning on your estates. And I have the best expert here. Hi, Cedric. How are you? Hi, Laura. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I think that we are really getting some great information out for people. Today, I actually want to talk to you about guardianship over your kids or guardianship nominations for when, when something happens to you, because this unfortunately is a common thing. And you want to make sure that your true legacy, our babies are taken care of. So I want you to give me a little bit of talk about how they go about doing that and why it's so important. Well, you're right, Laura. This is something that is very, it's vital important. We talk so much about passing down our assets, but it's often overlooked in wills and sometimes living trust. Who's actually going to step in your shoes should something happen to both parents or if you're a single parent, something happens to you? Who's going to step in? And it is our belief that there's no other individual that's better suited to appoint your successor as a parent than you are. And what we don't want to do is leave it to the court system to determine who might be the best parent to step in your shoes. Now, typically, there's there's four things that I like to advise clients on when we're talking, four considerations here. First of all, you got to be able to choose the right candidate. You got to consider the characteristics and the lifestyle of your care, of your uh, candidate. Yeah. You got to prior- make a prioritized list and narrow that list down to who's going to be your your primary, your reserve, and backup reserve. And then also you want to think about the temporary versus long-term guardians. Your next door neighbor might be great to, to watch your kids or take, take your kids in for a few months. However, maybe not for a few years. So temporary short-term versus the long-term guardians. So that's pretty much some of the considerations that I discuss with clients who have minor children still living in the home. Yes, because honestly, you definitely don't want to have the kids go into the court system. They don't necessarily have the true interest uh, of your heart for your children. So, I mean, it's really important. I can't imagine if that should have happened and something my son would have ended up in the system, you know, Uh, and I know it's not pleasant to talk about. So where do people start um, with their planning on this? I know you just said first give them some pros and cons, write down people's names really think about them, but then what will be their next step? Well, first of all, when, you, when you're choosing the right candidate, so you got it starts with a conversation like so, many, so much of this we've talked about over the series. Choosing the right candidate. Is, is, is if there an aunt, an, an, an uncle, a cousin, or a close friend who basically uh, demonstrates your values? Who would raise your kids in a similar fashion that you would raise their kids? Consider their lifestyle. You know, also, we, there's other considerations such as would you want your kids to stay with them if they should they get a divorce? So we even look at that. Okay, so what happens if something happens to you and you've chosen a, a husband and a wife to be guardians, but is it really the husband that you have the great relationship with? Is it really the, the spouse that you have the great relationship with? So these there, there are these little subtle nuances that we help clients discuss when you know, choosing who is the most suitable option for you. And something, to, something that we uh, for, uh, overlook is that, look, we say, okay, well, we trust the court. Do we really trust the court? That the court has the public's best interest in heart at general, at heart. But what about yours? Let's say, for instance, you have that, that crazy uncle or that, that wicked stepsister, right? That the court doesn't know that they have these problems and issues, but you know this person, right? Yeah. And you know that you would never want your child to be raised by this individual. Yes. Well, this person can petition for guardianship of your child should something happen to, to one or both parents. Let's say both parents. Um, now, this individual, your wicked stepsister, will just pick on her for a minute. She petitions the court to take care of your child. Mm. And to, the, to, the, to the, um, the naked eye, she's a great candidate. She's a model citizen. But you know her values don't align with your values. Yes. And you know that you two don't see eye to eye. Well, guess what? You don't necessarily want that person for the next 10 or 15 years, however however old your minor child is, to step in your shoes. That's why right now is the the time for you to choose who is the best candidate. We like to pick two or three uh, to step in your shoes if something happened to you. 
Wow. Um, you mentioned that, you know, that's, I never thought about the divorce situation and not everybody that you do choose doesn't necessarily have to be family. So that is something that people can think about as well. Um, Cause honestly, when we talk about legacies, we are talking about our future generations and everything that we do. We want to give them the best hands and foot up to a better life and, and, and being able to get through things. So Cedric, we're kind of winding down a little bit. Do you have any other uh, comments that you would like to say before we end? Because I know that people can reach out to you and get their consultation and your information is at the end of the video, but is there any last words that you want to say to get people thinking about starting this process? Absolutely. There's another point that I think is very important to consider your temporary versus your long-term guardians. Get a list together of if something was, if there were, it was an emergency, who would be kind of a first responder if you or your significant other could not step in and take care of your child? Let's say if you're in a hospital, you're incapacitated. If you have a temporary guardian list, your next door neighbor or someone who you're really close to could actually step in and take care of your, your child versus the long-term guardians to where these are the people that, these are the, your short list of people that are gonna raise your child for the next 10 to 15 years or however old your child is till they're 18. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to have two lists. Now, they can be one and the same, it can be the same people. You know, I'm a transplant, I'm not originally from California, right? So my, my mother would have to, of course, make arrangements to come get my child far away if something should happen to me or, or even as a mother. So, that's something that's very important to consider, a short-term guardian list and a long-term guardian list and uh, the implications of both that they can have. Because you don't want your child to rile up in the custody and care of strangers. So right. that's, that's how this happens. When there's no preparation, this is when our kids end up in the care and custody of, of strangers. That's really a lot of great information. And I think that this will definitely start making people think right now. That's something that you could do. I mean, even before you call Cedric at his uh, Legacy One Law, you can sit down with this already and start thinking about who you would like to take care of your babies. And I don't care if they're 35, 65, 95, they always gonna be our baby. So that's just how it is. <laughs> you definitely wanna give them a leg up. So guys, if you have any questions, you're ready to move forward, you're going to tackle these tough, tough information, you need to make sure you definitely reach out to Cedric Collins. His information is at the end of the video, and I am sure he will help you get on the right path to starting your securing your legacy. Simple as that. And I'm Laura Key. I'm the Realty Goddess, and I help to establish the community one house at a time. That doesn't necessarily mean the community. It begins with us. Community begins with us. I wish you nothing but love, light, and blessings. Why not go out on the limb? Isn't that where the fruit is? Thank you, Cedric, for being with me today. Thank you, Laura. Thank mm -hmm. you.